This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found financial tech in the Guide Rock Capital Management Commentary, recorded on August 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live. Actually, broadcasting live from the Gallup campus today here in Omaha, Nebraska. And we post the show, including written commentary, each week out at TheAverageGuy.tv. Financial tech to the latest market commentary from the award-winning Andrew Hunt, CFP, and president of Guide Rock Capital Management located right here in Omaha, Nebraska. If you'd like to receive a free copy of the written commentary in advance, just send us an email. That's Andrew underscore Hunt at guiderockcapital.com and just put subscribe in the subject line and he'll get you added to the mailing list so that'll automatically come out to you each week like it does with me. Andrew, great to see you. You're just down the hall from me, but we're in our offices and uh, pulling off the podcast. We took a week or so off again. It's summertime and our schedules just aren't matching up, but it's great to have you back. Yeah, glad to be back. I was uh, on vacation last week in Breckenridge, Colorado. Wanted to do the podcast from Breckenridge, but you know, I thought, hey, we're on vacation. Probably should just, you know, spend time with the family. So That's a good call. Good call. Yeah, you know, I do what I can. All right, the markets. Uh, so Robert Burns, father of fourteen and writer of all all La, excuse me, all Lang Sane, once said, "There is no such uncertainty as a sure thing." Well, was he ever right? Here are a few sure things. I'll go ahead and throw these out there. One, the Federal Reserve intends to reduce economic stimulus by tapering quantitative easing. That's one sure thing. Two, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke plans to retire. And three, gross domestic product or GDP growth was positive in Europe during the second quarter. Those are three sure things. Now here are some uncertainties which are going to arise from them. One, when will quantitative easing begin to end? How will the changes in the program affect world economies and markets? We don't know. That's one point of uncertainty. Two, who will be the new Fed chairman? And what policies will be pursued? And three, was the second quarter a turning point for the Euro area economy? And is Europe moving out of a recession? Well, how has uncertainty affected things? It, it's left the U.S. Treasury a whole lot less popular than they once were. China and Japan reduced their holdings in U.S. Treasuries by about $40 billion recently. According to Reuters, a Chinese economist said the sale of bond yields will rise and prices will fall as quantitative easing ends. But in the same article, a Japanese policymaker said expectations about changing Fed policies create market volatility that forced some Asian central banks to defend their currencies and that led to the sale of treasuries. In total, guys, in total, about $60 billion of foreign investment money was pulled out of treasuries in June. Uh, $40 billion of that was from China and Japan. So a lot of money moving out of treasuries in the last couple months. You know, in this uncertainty that we just talked about, it didn't do much for American stocks either. At the end of last week, most major U.S. stock markets had moved lower. We saw really significant movements, and of course, we're talking here on Thursday. We've already seen uh, additional movements this week, so uh, stocks have been beaten up by this uncertainty as well. So is it the beginning of the end? <laughs> well, maybe. Last Tuesday, Eurostat, which provides statistical information on the European Union, announced that its flash estimates showed positive economic growth, up 0.3% for the euro area for the second quarter. Media outlets totally embraced the news with tremendous enthusiasm, and some informed the world that Europe was once again on its feet. Here's a couple headlines. Wall Street Journal uh, titles, Eurozone emerges from recession. CNBC says, Eurozone exits longest recession in over 40 years. And Reuters also said, Germany, France, uh, haul Eurozone out of recession. So some big headlines coming out on the, well, it's possible the second quarter will prove to be a turning point for Europe's economy. Um, the headlines were a bit rash, though. Perhaps the blog written by Oli Wren, European Commissioner for Economic and Monetary Affairs, should have been read before crafting their headlines because he wrote this, quote, add today's quarterly GDP figures to other recent positive survey data and you will find reasonable evidence suggesting the European economy is gradually gaining momentum. 
I hope there will be no premature self-congratulatory statements suggesting the crisis is over, for we all know that there are still substantial obstacles to overcome. The growth figures remain low and the tentative signs of growth are still fragile. The averages hide important differences between member states, so there is still a very long way to go before we reach our ultimate goal of a sustainable growth model that delivers more jobs." End quote. So officially the end of the uh, Euro area crisis will be determined by the Center for Economic Policy Research, CEPR. Uh, this organization is similar to the National Bureau for Economic Research here in the United States. Um, in both regions, the business cycle dating is tricky business. The CEPR assesses G and other factors, which as the components of output and labor market data when determining the start and end dates of recessions and expansions. So it's kind of a moving target. One of the biggest hazards, hazards to cycle dating is data revision. We've talked about it on this show. We, we hear some data points and then a couple weeks later, oh, psych, here's some different data points. It was really a little bit different than what we initially reported. So you can be sure that the CEPR will be paying attention when Eurostat issues revised second quarter numbers in early September. Okay, here's our quote for the week. It's from George Washington, our first president of the United States. It says, true friendship is a plant of slow growth and must undergo and withstand the shocks of adversity before it is entitled to excuse me entitled to the appellation. All right, Andrew, always good to have you. As we do uh, almost each and every week out here, uh, quick question for you: As we get to the end of August, right? Traditional summer is ending here in the United States, and of course, the markets have kind of been on a good run through the summer. Um, so stuff we haven't typically seen. They typically have gone backwards in the summer. Um, even with things pulling back a little bit, where are we at for the year with the markets? I mean, is, should folks be worried at, at this point, or how should they be cautious? Yeah, so that's a great question, Jim. And, of course, in our commentary, we report the year-to-date returns uh, every single week. So right now, the S&P 500, the Standard & Poor's 500, which is U.S. domestic stocks, the 500 largest, is still up, um, as of last Friday, 17% on the year. So a banner year by anybody's standards. Um, uh, excuse me, that was the one year, that was 12 months, so the year to date is 16.1% on the year. Um, so a banner still year. Pretty good, still pretty good. Yeah, we've seen a huge year. The spring was hot, the summer remained pretty hot. We saw some, we've seen a lot of volatility though. I think if you ask somebody that wasn't uh, looking kind of in the full context of things, they would say, gosh, this year has been really, it's been really kind of rough, hasn't it, Andrew? Well, it kind of feels like it. <laughs> in the last couple of weeks alone, um, we've seen bond interest rates rising, which of course, you know, just destroys prices on bonds. Um, we've seen the stock market react to that volatility. It's been a very volatile year. Um, I'll tell people, historically, October is a month uh, that, that can be pretty ugly. So um, uh, September, October can be pretty ugly. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Uh, but by anybody's standards, you know, year to date, 16.1 as of last Friday return. Um, it's fantastic. If, if you're in a buy and hold mentality, do you do anything at this point? Do you make any changes uh, you know, at, at this point or just kind of write it out through the end of the year? I'll tell you what, Jim. I am, uh, I am a, a big proponent of what we call systematic rebalancing. Um, so what that means is you decide, hey, once a quarter or, or once every you know, month or whatever it is you decide with your professional advisor is that we're going we're gonna to rebalance our portfolio back to our original allocation because over the course of time, uh, securities will rise in value and some will fall in value and so your allocation that you originally set out isn't what it was originally. Uh, it's moved. And so what you do is you sell what's risen and, and buy more of what's fallen and that accomplishes the first rule of investing uh, systematically and that first rule of investing is to buy low and sell high. It feels weird while you're doing it but there's been tons and tons of studies out there that by doing that you can actually magnify returns over the long term. So I'm a big proponent, even if you're a buy and hold type person, to systematically rebalance on a scheduled date um, uh, with your with your advisor. Awesome. Well, you mentioned your advisor, and if you don't have an advisor, Andrew, of course, is always open. If you have questions, uh, comments, anything like that, you can. Even if you're you're on Twitter and you want to send him a question, you can just send him a Twitter. Andrew D Hunt, uh, he is found on Twitter, or send him an email. Andrew underscore Hunt at uh, GuideRockCapital.com. He loved to, if you have questions about this show, any of the shows we've done in the past, or just a quick question, he'd love to answer that for you. So get that uh, to him. Andrew, again, great job. Uh, thanks. 
We'll remind folks if you're new to podcasting and you're looking for an easy way to get these podcasts, many of you coming in, I was telling Andrew uh, just uh, the last couple of days, we've actually seen our numbers double. Now when you start you know, at a low number and you double it, it, gets, it goes up pretty fast, but we appreciate you, the listener, if you're out here uh, joining us for the first time or if you heard us through any of the outlets that we're out at. We appreciate you coming out. But Stitcher is an easy way to get the podcast every single week. If you just go out to Stitcher.com and create an account, search for Financial Tech, you can find us out there. And then uh, you can find that on just about any browser or any mobile device. You can download the Stitcher app, and those podcasts will be delivered to your phone. Actually, you can stream them really easy right off your phone. Every single week, you can catch us that we're out here doing it. During the summer, we take a little bit of time off just because we're doing stuff. But generally, we're out here every single week. Stitcher.com, search Financial Tech. It's education for your ears. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but be sure to visit Guide Rock Capital over there at guiderockcapital.com. You can follow Andrew on Twitter. He's just Dean Hunt and get all the show notes that we have out at theaverageguy.tv. Now, Andrew and I say thanks for listening, and we'll catch up with you next week. We will probably be here next week. Remember, be smart about your investing. Guide Rock Capital Management, Inc., or Guide Rock, is a registered investment advisor that is registered with the state of Nebraska and located in Omaha, Nebraska. Guide Rock and its representatives are in compliance with the current registration requirements imposed upon investment advisors in the states in which they maintain clients. Guide Rock may only transact business in those states in which it is registered or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from registration requirements. Important information describing Guide Rock's business operations, services, and fees can be viewed on the SEC's website at www.advisorinfo.sec.gov. Guide Rock will provide Form ADV Part 2, which serves as the firm's disclosure document to all clients. Copies of Form ADV Part 2 are also available to interested parties upon request. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Past performance is not indicative of future results. No current or prospective clients should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, or product made reference to directly or indirectly on this video, website, or indirectly via hyperlink or any affiliated third-party website will be profitable or equal to past performance levels.